serious trending topics. <laughs> what does the fuck say? We spend most of our time talking news, politics, and policy on Up and Adam, but not surprisingly, that's not what the majority of Americans are talking about. Our intrepid reporter, Siri Free, spends hours <laughs> sifting through the landfill of American culture to bring you the top five trending topics on social media. Siri, what's trending? Number five. Jack, does Hot Nuggets still wear onesies? Uh, not so much. She's okay. a little old for Oh, she, she's a little old for it. How yeah. old is she? Two. Oh, really? Okay, so that's mo- probably the cutoff for a onesie? I think so, yeah. All right, so what would you think of a 25-year-old man wearing a onesie? I would not be for that. <laughs> you probably wouldn't let him babysit your daughter? No, I would not. <laughs> well, most of us would agree that onesies are really only appropriate for children under two. This was confirmed by the masses this past week when an effort to encourage young people to sign up for Obamacare went all wrong. <laughs> it all started with a tweet organizing for- by Organizing for Action, the grassroots operation advocating for President Obama's agenda. They tweeted a photo of a young guy with a, with hipster glasses wearing a black and red plaid onesie and cradling <laughs> a mug. He looked very uh, warm and cozy. He and uh, he but felt so good about his oh. insurance. The text next to the image reads, wear pajamas, drink hot chocolate, and talk about health insurance. Hashtag get talking. Where did this idea that men aren't supposed to be men come from? <laughs> You're supposed to sip hot chocolate and You know, usually it comes from the top. Um, what do we call that? The president? Subsequently, Pajama Boy was born, and so the mocking that immediately followed. Comments included a picture of Pajama Boy with the words, I live with my parents, plastered over it. <laughs> <laughs> and one that read, why, yes, I am a thought leader. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, Pajama Boy, turns out, uh, is an employee with Organizing for Action, what oh. used to be Obama for America. Who would volunteer for something like that? And uh, in one of those, uh, this guy's blog post, his name's Ethan. Uh, Ethan writes... Of course it is. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, he looks like an Ethan. He really In does. a blog post uh, written uh, back in 2012 in October, when the ve- president visited Madison, he writes, quote, I believe in you. I'm asking you to keep believing in me. Uh, and then he writes, my Obama groupie mentality. I still believe in you, Mr. President. You're an incredible speaker and Romney sucks. <sighs> so that's Pajama Boy. Okay, Ethan. Mm-hmm. That's Ethan, the Pajama Boy. For oh. One of our biggest listeners is, is, is an Ethan. <laughs> He's okay, though. <laughs> well, you know, perhaps this is an opportunity that the Republicans can take to talk about Obamacare and just how ridiculous it is. Yeah, because they never do that. Right. <laughs> Number four. Well, another week, another insensitive tweet. Imagine that. What did I do? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you were following me. Uh, however, it was not from a celebrity this time. Well, it wasn't me then. But a top corporate employee. I saw this. Yes. Yeah. Justine, Weird. is it Seiko? Not sure. smart. That's what I'm going to say. Justine, not smart. Ironically, the global head of communications Oops. for the firm IAC tweeted Friday, going to Africa. Hope I don't get AIDS. Oh, just kidding. I'm white. Wow. Right this before is, wow. flying out. So wow. she flies out. She's just stuck on this flight for something like 12 hours. Uh-huh. <laughs> so the internet, everyone online is able to trash this woman. Mm-hmm. appropriately it's crazy she can't do anything about it for 12 hours so it's she has no idea. Yeah. Yeah. she doesn't apologize the it just festers <laughs> well the hashtag <laughs> she landed and she was famous <laughs> the hashtag hashtag Infamous. has justine landed yet <laughs> shot up <laughs> list of trending topics there were even tweets displaying a real-time flight tracker of seiko's flight oh, wow people were counting this down like do you realize your life is about to be over uh-huh oh moreover someone even registered the domain name justinesaco.com and directed it to the homepage for oh, Aid for Africa. Wow. It's so bad. Imagine How do you shock. enjoy a... Uh, how do you enjoy a... Now, she got fired, right? Yes, she, she actually did. She, she did. But, well, when she when she landed, she quickly tried to do undo the undoable by deleting her account, deleting her tweet, that sort of thing. But, no, a- IAC deleted her existence from its website <laughs> as well as employment with the company on Saturday. How do you enjoy vacation when you've been fired in a... The biggest public shaming you can possibly well, do. How do you join Christmas? You, yeah. you, you pinch your pennies. Oh, gosh. Maybe you don't order room service. Maybe you don't. How, how, how do, do adults? You fly back? I know this. I'm 24. How do adults that are head of communications tweet such outrageous things? 
such outrageous things. I don't get Seriously. it. Because you'll you'll learn as you get older. You don't necessarily have to be smart to advance <laughs> no. yeah. in certain jobs. Sadly. People, people yeah. are dumb. Sadly. Was that a shot at us? Number so. three. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Seiko one won't... of you. I'll let you decide. Which one. <laughs> oh, Seiko won't be the only one experiencing a not so merry Christmas. Apparently, Target has become, well, a target of not only hackers, but public outrage using social media to voice their contempt. On Thursday, Target admitted that as many as 40 million customers had their credit and debit card information stolen between November 27th and December 15th. Mm-hmm. Now, I live off of Target, so I was absolutely outraged because I use all do- all sorts of different cards with Target, which means that all my cards were compromised. So what do you have to do? I mean, do you, do you have to get new cards? Well, that's what a lot of people were asking. Concerned customers took to Twitter on Thursday to express concern and frustration. Tweets ranged from questions such as, if I shopped at Target recently, but haven't noticed anything unusual in my bank account, should I be concerned? Or, you know, do you just wait it out and see what happens? Wait for the fraud to happen, yeah. Right. Or frustration. Thanks, Target, for making me go through the trouble of ordering new cards from overseas and closing my credit cards right before Christmas. Mm-hmm. Boy, Target's not... And Beyonce has jumped on this too. Target's not doing well right now because she's like, well, that's fine. Walmart and I, remember how last week or two weeks ago we talked about how Target said, we're not going to sell your album, Beyonce. Right, Beyonce uh, uh, unannounced puts her album up on YouTube, yes. sells a million copies of it. And Target was mad. Target was mad because they have some sort of exclusivity agreement. They have no foot to stand on anymore. They're not going to have a very Merry Christmas. Well, look, this happened to Target. I, I don't I don't get all the rage directed at Target. Well, that's Somebody the thing. Somebody did it's about this the to Target. It's about it's the security, security of our thing. current system sure. uh, for transactions. It's long been questioned by critics who point out the easy-to-copy magnetic strip on the back of cards. Yeah, you know who doesn't make the magnetic strips? Target. Target. Right, exactly. But it needs to be changed, and nobody wants to foot the bill to change this. Yeah, you know who's not responsible for footing the bill to change the magnetic strips? <laughs> Target. Target. <laughs> yeah, but you know who's going to be in trouble this Christmas season and gets all the blame? Target. I don't know. You know, they I, do, I, though. I don't think so. I mean, I, went, I, I, didn't, I drove by Target over the weekend. I still it was you didn't packed. go in because you were afraid of losing your identity. <laughs> yeah, well, I was, <laughs> it was absolutely packed. <laughs> I don't think Target's hurting too too much. I agree. And, they're, and, and you know what? Yeah. I, they're 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 trying to do the right thing. You know, they're they're offering discounts, mm-hmm. giving but uh, giving credit monitoring. Lose your identity Look, for ten. This could off. have happened to any retailer. I agree, but it's the the sheer number. I mean, I've heard of Twitter and, lose uh, having you know two million accounts hacked, or uh, Facebook having passwords for four million accounts. This is 40 million pieces of credit card information. This is a lot of data. Is it Target's fault it's so popular? Good point. (laughs) That's true. And who's to say it won't happen to Walmart next or other places next? Well, not if they don't change something. Number two. When news was out on Wednesday that Phil Robertson of A&E's Duck Dynasty was indefinitely suspended from the what? show for sharing his candid belief about homosexuality, backlash backlash was to be expected. Mm-hmm. It is, after all, one of the most watched shows on cable. But the response on Facebook and Twitter has been overwhelming. Not only has A&E's official Facebook page been flooded with comments, another Facebook page titled We Stand With Phil has emerged. The page skyrocketed to over six, 516,000 likes in a little over 12 hours hours currently it's at 1.5 million wow. comments include outcry over lack of personal freedom of speech proposals to elect phil robert robertson as president in 2016 you know there's always some guy that does that and even a call to demonstrate your support of phil by wearing duck commander calls there's a picture of this guy he's like has all, uh, these the necklaces with the duck call thing on mm-hmm. it. have you seen this i've seen duck calls he's like wear your wear your duck commander call gadget show that you support phil robertson i'm like i don't even know where to buy one of those i mean we live in a place where people just wear duck calls because they use duck calls that's right apparently yeah so what is the fate of the dynasty well according to louisiana lieutenant governor if what if why would huh if he's making comments. The Louisiana lieutenant governor has power with the, the arts apparently, and entertainment Apparently, apparently. Well, he said this, because apparently he has power. If the Robertson family cannot come to an agreement with A&E and wants to continue the show, Louisiana already has the infrastructure in place to maintain their record-breaking program. Somehow, I don't think this is going to work out very well. Well, this is the market doing its job. This is that if A&E doesn't want to be in the business with people who have these beliefs, they are free to... Absolutely. 
they are free to employ whoever they want to. Somebody else can pick but, them up. But right, right, some other network is going to pick these uh, these guys up, and they are going to have the biggest ratings in cable television. Yeah. Exactly. Right. The market will will come to a solution here. Mm-hmm. And I don't see Louisiana's doing it. <laughs> Number one. I didn't know they had a television network. I didn't think so they, either. Sure they got public TV like every state has. <laughs> yeah, PBS. The number one trending topic this week really should come as no surprise. With only two days to go, the Christmas spirit is flooding everyone's internet searches. Not, not everyone. Facebook posts and tweets. Not everyone. <clears throat> Grinch. Perhaps most heartwarming is the most widely shared Christmas story online. Brenda Schmitz, a wife and a mother of four boys, passed away from ovarian cancer in September 2011. Aww. A month before she died, though, Brenda wrote a letter to the Des Moines, Iowa radio station Star 102.5. She asked a friend to wait to mail it until her husband, David, had fallen in love again. Aww. So this was two years ago. Now, every year, the station takes submissions for Christmas wishes, granting a select few. The station brought in David and surprised him by saying that they had received a letter from his wife. Ugh. Brenda's first request was a day of pampering for David's new fiance. I thought that was so sweet. Wow. She also requested a magical trip for the family and a night out full of drinks, food, and fun for the cancer doctors at Mercy Medical Hospital where she was treated. All three of Brenda's wishes were granted by the station and local sponsors who sent the family of eight of eight to wow. Disney World. Wow. There wasn't a dry eye in the room when we got the letter. Alan said he's the he's the producer. It really inspired us to do something for her. Wow, that's amazing. How sweet. That's a tough that's story, amazing. but to have the forethought of uh, mm -hmm. I'm I'm going to be gone from this earth and yeah. I love my husband and I want to make sure he's with someone who loves him too. That's uh it's amazing. It's incredible. Yeah. yeah, could could you imagine Jack if you weren't here your wife being with anybody else? No, my letter would be uh, keep your damn hands off. <laughs> She's mine even in the afterlife. That's right. I will haunt you. Uh, Very protective. No, that's a, that's a touching story. Wow. Mm -hmm. So there's Christmas miracles. Well, from uh, one Christmas miracle to uh, you, you uh, the Rudolph nose has not... <laughs> I have not been able to uh, concentrate much with your blinking My nose. nose. You you know, know, maybe serious? if you had worn that for Miss America, <laughs> you'd be Miss America. So you're suggesting that I should have eaten for my talent. I should have worn a Rudolph nose. Yes. Well, Jack, if nothing else, they wouldn't have forgotten me. That's for That's sure. That's right. Siri, <laughs> thank you for letting us know what's trending online. You're very welcome.